Right now, we are joined by two guests in our studios, Air Marshal Retired P.S. Aluwalia, former Chief of Southern and Western Command, and Lieutenant General uh, Raj Kadyan, sir, former Deputy Chief of the Army Staff. Welcome and very happy Republic Day to both of you, sir. Thank you. Same to you. Sir, Raj Kadyan, sir, coming to you first. Tell us about the military power, the progress that India is achieving, the 65th Republic Day. Tell us about your memories of Republic Day celebrations. Well, one has been seeing or watching or hearing of the Republic Day for the last many years. And uh, <clears throat> there has been tremendous progress in the country, not only on the military field, which of course is in the shop window on the Republic Day, but also in the science and technology. Uh, we are a country which has a mission to the Mars already on its way. Uh, the, the military, one of the largest in the world, I think third largest, we have, despite the shortages that we have, but uh, the military has got the advanced equipment, advanced technology. Mm -hmm. uh, we are the only military which keeps getting deployed in the highest battlefield in the world, but also in the hottest desert in the, perhaps, in the world, barring a few countries. So the, the, the variety of tasks that the military has been undertaking, not only in its primary task of defending the country against a foreign aggression, but in maintaining the integrity of the country against the internal Fisipiris tendencies. It started uh, nearly five decades ago in the Northeast. Nagaland was the first state to start the problem. Then there was Mizoram. Now there's Manipur is still having problems. Assam is having problems. Then a bigger problem in Kashmir, which is more than a county insurgency. It is a proxy war that the army has been fighting since 1989 and a large part of the army is deployed. It's a very difficult operation for any army to carry on for such long. And uh, well, uh, army is involved in a, in a problem that's not military in nature. It's a political problem. It's economic problem. It's a sociological problem. Military is only one of the facets. But the army at best has been tasked and has been keeping this situation under control so that our democratic process can carry on successfully, in which it has been carrying on. Of course, the army uh, in operations of this kind, when the adversary is not identifiable, unlike the war, uh, war is a very happy situation for a soldier. But there is a line beyond which he is free to do whatever he wants to. No questions are asked. But in an insurgency situation, the army has a very complicated role that you you are acting against your own people. Your own people you can't identify. He is like any other civilian. He normally uses the civilians' fires from behind their shoulders. So the mistakes do occur, and that's why the questions keep getting raised on the Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Well, it's not an act which the army asked for. It's not an act which the army is doing. It was an act passed by the parliament in 1958. It's an enabling act that if you send a soldier there in a difficult situation, and the mistakes will occur and do occur in all over the world, then you haul him up in the court. So it's very highly demotivating. So it's, it's a very important legal provision, protection given to the soldier that any genuine mistake that does take place gives you legal protection, you cannot be hauled up in the court. Army had its own system of trying out and army system is very fair, very thorough. Of course the controversies do come, like in Machil case, army has court marching its own people. I mean, that was a mistake which could have been avoided. But similarly, if you go to the latest that has come two days ago, that the army has exonerated people from another patribal case. Right. Well, the controversy, but I have no doubt to, uh, to state that the army's investigations are fair and thorough. We, we need to realize that the army is, has the greatest stake in maintaining the discipline. If they let the soldiers run amok and do all these kinds of things, then they can't run the army, which is a disciplined force, which is required. No commanding officer can command a unit if he lets them go free, that you do what you feel like and we'll protect you. That doesn't happen. These are genuine mistakes that happen. Otherwise, uh, the way we are lacking still in the uh, military field uh, is the indigenization of the equipment. We, we still import 70% of our equipment. Despite the fact that we have two fronts where we are facing a situation with countries where our relations are frictional right. at best. So we, we should have been a little more aggressive in developing the indigenous production capabilities. We are the largest importers of the arms and equipment in the world. 
whether it is because of vested interest, which prima facie appears to be the case, or it is just lack of, I, I don't think the talent is lacking. It is just the system that is sluggish. We have not been able to develop our research and development capabilities, uh, not our production capabilities, and we still, even for things like carbine and all, we are still importing it, strange. And if you look at the dichotomy that uh, we, we can send a mission to Mars, we can produce intercontinental ballistic missiles, and we still cannot produce uh, helmets and uh, body armor that uh, can prove effective. Something is not right somewhere. So there are allegations of the public sector undertaking which are involved in defense production. Maybe country has to give it a uh, fresh thought, either privatize more of the defense production or do something radical because we cannot continue with the situation where the requirement of weapons equipment is unending. Okay. We have a China front, we are facing a LOC of 4,000 kilometers which is volatile, which is undefined, it's, it's like a desert in the mountains. So the problems will keep occurring and we need to keep prepared ourselves. We are raising a core, raising a core is one aspect, manpower is not a problem, but the equipment is going to be a problem. The, the somehow the system has got such a fetish for corruption that a slight whiff of any wrongdoing and we cancel it. Right, sir. The, the military acquisitions are long time process. You cannot acquire equipment overnight. It right, sir. take a long time. So if you cancel and blacklist, it, blacklist companies one after the other, then the acquisition naturally will get slower.